Okay, guys, um, welcome back to today's episode of our class. In today's class, we want to talk about characterization of organic compounds. And under the characterization, we, are want to, we want to look at structural formula determination and identification. Now, have you ever thought to yourself, how did they actually come to terms with all the formulas in organic compounds that we know? Right? How did they actually say that butanol has this formula, methanol has this formula, carboxylic acid, and the rest of them? Right? Now, that was made possible through the use of instrumental analysis. In other words, spectroscopic method of analysis. Right? Spectroscopic method of analysis. Now, we have four of them. We have the first one, UV visible spectroscopy, which is UV means ultraviolet visible. Now, infrared, IR, nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR, mass spectrometry, MS. Now, it is important for us to take note of these acronyms, just in case of exams, right? Now, we're going to be looking at shortly how these methods, each of them, the role they played, right? And what is their job in actually getting a structure of a compound? Chemists will say these instrumental methods helped us to elucidate structure of organic compound All right elucidate simply means you know putting together it gets a full compound so let's look at the first one spectroscopy the functions Now, what is the function of UV visible? We said um, the main work of ultraviolet or visible spectroscopy is to determine or to detect the type and nature of multiple bond or double bond, especially conjugated. All right. Now, it is the work of this to tell us whether a compound has a double bond. This is a double bond or a conjugated system. A conjugated system, or I would say a conjugated double bond. Now, what it simply means is that when a compound contains a double bond, this is what we have. A conjugated double bond is this. Two double bonds separated by each other by just a single bond. Okay, so once you actually run UV visible spectroscopy on organic compound, if there is any double bond presence, this is the spectroscopy that is going to detect it. Right? So if you run alkanes, alkanes do not have a double bond. If you run alkane here, it's not going to detect it. Right? So the work of this is to detect the type and nature of multiple bonds. In other words, double bonds, especially the conjugated double bonds. Now, number two is the infrared. Infrared. Spectroscopy. Now, what is the function of infrared? Now, the work of infrared spectroscopy is to detect the type of functional group present. And what do I mean functional group? Functional group is a group of atoms or an atom, all right, that determines the chemical reactivity of a compound. For example, alcohols have functional group of OH. This is alcohol functional group. Now, carboxylic acid or carboxyl group have functional group of COOH. That is that. Aldehydes have functional group of CHO. So you notice that in organic compounds, we have different compounds with different functional group. So how are we able to determine whether this compound has a particular functional group or not? It is the work of infrared, right? So if a compound contains alcohols, if you run into infrared spectroscopy, it will detect this. If the compound contains um, aldehyde, if you run into infrared spectroscopy, it's going to detect this. So if somebody should ask you, what is the work of infrared spectroscopy, right? It's basically to detect the types of functional group present in an organic compound. I'll give a typical example, a case of a word problem. Now, they could ask you, imagine a compound is being oxidized. If you oxidize primary alcohols, you're going to get um, an aldehyde, subsequently a carboxylic acid. 
Now, which type of, how can we detect, right? Which type of spectroscopy can we use to detect that particular process? Now, listen, if you subject a compound to oxidation, after oxidation, the functional group is going to change. It's no longer going to be what it used to be. So for you to be able to tell that there is a change in a functional group, you're going to run infrared before and after. If you run an infrared spectroscopy before a reaction, the functional groups you're going to see, right, is not going to be the same functional group like you're going to see after the reaction. Why? Because every chemical reaction leads to transformation. What was initially present, the functional group that was initially present before the reaction was carried out will no longer be what will be present after the reaction has been conducted. <coughs> so if you run an infrared spectroscopy, you're going to get a different functional group at the start point and get a different functional group at the end point. Okay, so take note of that. Now let's look at the next one. Number three is NMR. Now, do not forget that NMR is nuclear magnetic resonance, right? Nuclear magnetic resonance. Just take note of that acronym because over the past years, I've noticed a case where they will ask students, what is NMR? People do not know. So NMR means nuclear magnetic resonance. Now, UV, once again, is used to detect double bonds, especially conjugated double bonds. Infrared is used to detect functional group. Now, NMR, present. Now, almost all organic compounds must contain carbon and hydrogen, almost all of them. How do we know if a particular compound contains 20 carbons or 30 hydrogens? It is the work of NMR. It tells us the type and the nature. Right? So if a compound contains four hydrogens in total, this is what is going to tell us that that guy contains four hydrogens. And if that hydrogen is attached to carbon, it will tell us. If the hydrogen is attached to oxygen, it's going to tell us. So that is why we said it does not really tell us only the nature. It also tells us the type. So NMR is a type of spectroscopy that tells us the type and nature of hydrogens present in a compound and also the type and nature of carbons present in a compound. So take note of that, all right? If somebody should ask you, which type of um, instrumental methods can somebody use to identify the types and nature of hydrogens and carbons that are present in an organic compound class, it is NMR, Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy. Okay? Now, the last one is mass spectrometry mass spec. Now what is the work of this? It is used, it gives information about the relative molecular mass of a compound. So when you hear a compound has a molar mass of 50 grams per mole, organic compounds have a molar mass of 180 grams, um, how did we actually get to know those informations? It is with the help of mass spec. So mass spec gives us information about the relative molecular mass of that compound. And how does it work? Note, here, the molecule is bombarded by high energy electrons. So just in case, there are two ways questions can be asked pertaining to mass spec. There are a lot of ways, but the two major ways questions can be asked pertaining to mass spec is that, right, the first one is they can ask us which spectroscopic method gives information about the molar mass or the relative molecular mass of a compound. Molar mass and relative molecular mass, they are the same, right? In case you're being asked which spectroscopic method gives information about the relative molecular mass of a compound, it is mass spec. And also they can ask which spectroscopic method involves 
the bombardment of a molecule by a high energy electrons, it is still mass spec. Because in mass spec, the molecule in question is bombarded with a high energy electrons. All right? So that is all about um, spectroscopic method of analysis. So we're going to be looking at some few questions from the past questions to actually refresh our memory. But once again, do not forget that four of them, right, has a big role to play in getting a structure of a compound. The first one, which is UV visible, gives us information about the type and nature of double bond present in a compound, especially a conjugated double bond. Now, infrared gives us information about the type of functional group present, right, whether it is OH carboxyl group. NMR gives us information about the type and nature of hydrogens and carbons present. Whereas, relate, um, mass spec gives us information about the relative molecular mass. And in this particular uh, mass spec, the molecule in question is usually subjected to high energy electron bombardment. All right? So that is that for this. So let's look at some few questions. Before. All right, um, so we have a um, few questions here to you know, attempt. So actually check out what we just learned. Now the first question says, in what spectroscopic technique are the molecules of the compound bombarded by high energy electrons? In what spectroscopic technique are the molecules of the compound bombarded by high energy electrons? I believe you already know the answer. The answer is mass spectrometry. I already told us earlier. So the answer to this is mass spectrometry, not mass spectroscopy, please, not mass spectroscopy, just mass spectrometry, right? Now, the next, uh, the next one says, name the instrumental technique. Okay, so what if you use mass spectroscopy? Uh, they will not see Mark you wrong, all right? But for this particular one, it's best to use mass spectrometry. Now, the next one says, name the instrumental technique used in identifying two compounds with different functional groups. I already told us, I actually explained this. This is infrared. Infrared is basically what gives us information about the functional group of organic compounds. So if I really want to identify two different functional groups, I'm going to use infrared. Okay? So the answer to this question is infrared. Spectroscopy, that is the answer to that. Now the third question says, what type of spectroscopic technique is employed in identifying the nature of a double bond in pi, nature of a conjugated pi electron system? Now let me say this, anytime you hear pi electron system, pi electron system refers to as multiple bond or double bond. It's pi electrons are only present in double bonds or triple bonds, that is, in a multiple bond. So the moment you hear pi, electron system, your mind will quickly run to double bond or triple bond, right? But here in, in this particular, since for the part that is now say conjugated pi system, this actually sounds very familiar to what we saw previously when we did UV. UV, I told us UV was, is meant to detect the type and nature of multiple bonds, especially conjugated double bonds. So the answer for this would be UV visible spectroscopy. And do not forget that UV stands for ultraviolet, all right? Now the next question says, which of, this, which of the spectroscopic method can you use to check that a secondary alcohol has been completely oxidized to a ketone? Now remember, Secondary alcohol, forget about the secondary, alcohol to ketone. Now, let's, this is alcohol. The functional group of alcohol is OH. And a ketone, functional group of ketone is this. If you noticed, from alcohol to ketone, there is a change in the functional group. The functional group is the identity of these compounds. When it was alcohol, the functional group was OH. Right? When it was oxidized to ketone, the functional group changed to this, which simply means that there is a change in functional group. So for me to be able to actually identify that change in functional group, I'm going to use 
a spectroscopic method that can detect functional groups. All right? So the answer to this question is going to be infrared spectroscopy because it is only infrared spectroscopy that can be used to check if what was initially OH here is now COR. So the answer to this question is infrared spectroscopy. All right? Now, this is infrared. Now let's look at the last one. The last one says, what is the nature of the instrumental technique that gives information on the molecular mass of a compound? You already know the answer to that, right? Re um, mass spectrometry is what gives information about the relative molecular mass of a compound. And in mass spectrometry, the compounds are bombarded with high energy electrons. So the answer to this question is mass spectrometry. Now, I believe with this particular video, after watching this video, you should be able to actually know how to answer all questions pertaining to characterization of organic compounds. All right? Please do well to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you have any question. Thank you.